So good afternoon, WordCamp people. How are you doing today? <laughs> are you tired yet? Or are you, you got, you're getting some wind now? Are you tired? <laughs> are you, yeah? Okay. <laughs> so my name is Carla Campos. I am best known as a mom entrepreneur. I was featured on entrepreneur.com for my business ideas and all kinds of stuff that I do online. Here's my bio. So I'm a lover of ed tech. So I'm always in the community just teaching and talking about all things social, social media, digital marketing, and just having a good time doing it. So we're going to do something fun today. Um, I don't know if you guys saw me with the Scooby-Doo earlier, or my son was walking around with it. But it had an accident this morning, so it's a little um, milked. So, but I'm still going to pass it around. You touch it if you feel like you want to. <laughs> so before WordCamp, the conference, we were having this chat on Twitter with um, David and a bunch of people speaking, and we were making this joke that, I think it was Jim Gilbert, one of the speakers, that we're, we're going to come here and do pet camp. So this is, this is pet camp, guys. <laughs> so it's just a little fun photo contest. So you can just take Scooby-Doo, or if you don't want to touch him because he's a little milky, you can just take a picture of me with it. Don't touch Scooby, I'll pass him, but, you know. Or you can take a picture with him later, but, or here. Here you go, look. Scooby. <laughs> and if you take a picture and tweet it to um, the hashtag WMIA and at Social Media SAS, which is me on Twitter, you can win two tickets to what was known as Florida Social Con, but will be now the Social Tech Live Conference, which is happening here in July. And tickets are worth 150, so you can win two. And if you don't win the tickets, I have other stuff. I have lots of stuff. Some um, stylus laser pointers. So you guys can blind other speakers, not me. <laughs> and I have uh, a five um, USB charger for the car from our friends at Superior Automotive. So just stuff that you could win for playing with the dirty Scooby-Doo. If, you, if you're brave. If not, just, you know, here he is again. <laughs> and then I have... Um, some USB bracelets, because he's going down. Some USB bracelets, okay? So just some fun stuff, if anyone wondered what the, what the Scooby-Doo was about. Oh, and there's Jim, actually. That's who started the pet camp. <laughs> okay. So this is one of my favorite quotes. Um, having a startup is like jumping off a cliff and building a plane on the way down. Right, because when you create a company that's just starting out, so many things happen in between. You have a plan, you create a business plan, you think, yeah, this is, I'm going, I'm going. All of a sudden, all these things start happening, and it feels like you're falling down a cliff, and you literally have to build things to save yourself. <laughs> so what is a startup? I know you probably hear this term just being thrown around everywhere, right? And what, what is it different than a regular business? So a startup is a company in the early stages of operation, and it's designed to grow fast. And if you've never heard the term before, it's called scalability, so the ability to grow fast. They have a product or service they can sell to a large market. So I always talk about Uber, which is a very popular app, as you know, and they service a large market. They service people who need rides, who don't have rides, or maybe they do have rides, but they're going somewhere where there's a lot of traffic congestion and there's no parking. And I'm sure everybody here, has, who has used Uber here? Okay, so everybody knows where it is. I don't have to explain it. <laughs> So, and I'm here going to share some startup terminology because today we're going to be talking about the minimum viable product. And that is just the product that you need to show something that works. And this is what we're talking about today, using WordPress to show a minimum viable product. A product which has just enough features to gather validated learning about the product. And here we have again scalability. And I'll have this presentation available to you um, through the Word Camp Miami website, and you can click on the link to learn some more terms of startups if you're already not familiar with them, because I'm not, I don't know you, so I don't know how far you're into the startup scene. So I'm going to tell you about my startup story. So back in about 2005 or so, I was working a regular job, right, and I wanted to grow, but I was pretty much, I wasn't entry level, but I was in the middle and there was just no space to grow, right? So I'm like, oh man, I was in college as well. 
and I was just learning about business ideas, etc. So I saw Craig Newman, Craig Newmark, who is the founder of Craigslist, and I'm like, I want to be like that guy, right? I'm going to build my own Craigslist. But how the heck do I do that? I don't know how to code. I don't know how to do anything. How do I build a website? So I went online, and I looked up um, how do I build a website, right? And when you do that, they don't tell you, like, specifics about it. They just tell you how to build maybe like a five regular page website where it's just, you know, information. It's not something that functions out of the box and does like, you know, amazing things. So, um, so there. So I wanted to be like Craig Newmark. And you guys, you should tweet at him. <laughs> Say, hi, Craig, we're talking about you. <laughs> See if he answers. Sometimes they do. Okay. So I found something called Joomla. Okay, and we're here talking about WordPress, but when I went searching for something to build this new idea, I found Joomla. Okay, so that's what happened. <laughs> so as time progressed, right, Joomla was cool, but every time I went online and I spoke to bloggers and I was learning about SEO, I was learning about blogging, I was learning all things web and social media, um, they were all just talking about WordPress. WordPress, 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 right? I was like the not cool kid because I'm on Joomla. So I'm like, let me see what, what this WordPress is about. So I went on WordPress and I'm talking to them and they're all talking about SEO and guest blogging. So if you see a need, you fill a need, right? And that should be the startup culture manifesto <laughs> if it's not already. So I saw a need, right? All these bloggers needed a place to guest blog. So I took gig logo from a classified ad wannabe and on Joomla and I turned it into a guest blogging platform on WordPress. And we're back to the startup terminology, pivot time. So pivot means taking a business idea and just going a different direction with it, changing it. If you see a need, if you have this business idea but it's not working, we take it somewhere else where you see a need. So that's what I did. I'm sure, who, every, who here has a website on WordPress already? I'm sure I knew a lot of you would. <laughs> so these are some businesses that are on WordPress. We have the Tribune Media Group, Sony Music, and we have something called Bata, which is a footwear accessory manufacturing. So that's e-commerce websites. So I'm showing you this because just to show you some of the kind of things that you can do with WordPress that is just not blog related because a lot of people think WordPress equals blog. WordPress equals blog. They don't know about the functionality. I'm not saying you guys. They don't know about the functionalities of WordPress to create other things that are not blog. So WordPress features. We have user management, registration, menus, search, SEO, custom objects, blog, custom themes, et cetera, right? Okay, so I wanted to talk to you about user-generated content of like multi-site and guest posts, and you can check this later, but these features are things that if you have a business idea, you can build into your WordPress website to create this startup that does something more than a blog, okay? Um, for the multi-site, if you go to the um, Sun Sentinel website, they're using WordPress multi-site as a blog for their Sun Sentinel newspaper website and that people are creating content on their website. And they're, I'm sure they're selling ad space or selling whatever services they're selling using WordPress and user-generated content. Uh, WooCommerce, online shops, right? BuddyPress, online community, social network. Um, you can create other things, just not social network. And I spoke to the guys at Live Ninja, which is my case study today. And they started using um, BuddyPress, and they told me that you can actually build an Uber-like sort of website with BuddyPress. And who didn't know that here about BuddyPress? Okay. Okay. So why WordPress for startups? So I was walking around um, town all the way in the Wynwood. I was all over the co-working spaces talking to all kinds of developers, and I was like, why would you use WordPress to start your startup rather than develop it right native, code it yourself? Like, why would you just use WordPress? So the answer is that it's easy, right, to use out of the box. It's quick to launch, and they use it for marketing, right? Because if you even, um, who knows, who here knows what Buffer is? 
Buffer App. So Buffer App has a blog on Tumblr, actually, not WordPress, but that's how they get the word out of what they're doing using a marketing uh, blog that's separate from their actual software that they create. And marketing is the key <laughs> to a successful startup. I have been to so many startup weekends and to, to so many startup type of events, and they have amazing, great ideas, but they never launch, they never pick up. Why? Because those people don't know marketing. So the idea is there, but guess what's gonna happen? Somebody who knows marketing is gonna go to the event and say, oh, what a great idea, right? Let me, let me plug it in, let me get a WordPress site up, let me market the crap out of it, and guess who's famous now and guess who's rich? The marketer, right? But the marketer never gets that respect. <laughs> Just an FYI. <laughs> Did you guys know that Groupon started on WordPress? Okay, so Groupon started on WordPress, and actually the founder said that it was ghetto. <laughs> right? I don't like to use that word, but it started as a ghetto blog, you know? They just did what, you know, they wanted to show what their idea was. They wanted to have a product. When you have investors looking at a product and you're competing with thousands of people with ideas, guess where they're gonna go and invest their money? With someone who has something that works or they can show an idea. And look at Groupon now, right? Who doesn't know about Groupon here? So Live Ninja is a local startup and they started on WordPress. They're still on WordPress for their marketing, but their software is a video chat, and they have, uh, I think that they bring like these stations to conferences like this where you can actually video shot, um, chat, and you don't have to own the software yourself. Like They can have a station like this, and you can video chat with people all over the world um, remotely, wherever they have these stations. But they started as a, let's see, like a community where you can actually sell your service. So say I'm a professor, right? And I want to teach people WordPress. I would have gone on Live Ninja, the original version, and I would have signed up as a professor or instructor, and then other people who want to learn would sign up on the other end. And it, this was all done on WordPress, except for the, um, the video chat part, which was a different software, which was able to connect with WordPress. So, you know, there's always that. You can use WordPress, but um, use outside scripts to connect together to make something else. So they've moved now, so they're no longer just um, like a communications platform, and they were using BuddyPress to power their website. So when I interviewed Emilio, who is one of the founders of Live Ninja, he told me these are some of the WordPress plugins that they're using. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with them. Advanced Custom Fields, Gravity Forms, and BuddyPress. So this is how they got started. They have they're extremely successful now. You can actually go and meet with them if you want, just to talk to them about how they got started, their idea, et cetera. Um, they're in Wynwood, and they have Waffle Wednesday. Every Wednesday, you could just go there. It's like a great networking event for people who just want to connect with people in the startup community. If you haven't been there, he's like, I, I've been there. <laughs> so, and always a concern with starting a WordPress startup is what about security, right? Everybody's always talking about security. But the 60 million people on WordPress are fine, right? They're, they're doing okay, they're dealing with it, they're doing the best they can. And Amelia from Live Ninja says they have not had a problem that they couldn't solve by, by going to Mark Jacquez, and I pronounce names terribly, so please. <laughs> I'm gonna have to talk to him later and be like, well, how do you pronounce your name? But, ah. <laughs> okay, well, I'm still gonna probably say it terribly, but you say it lovely. <laughs> so, um, all he did was go to his website and read some of the security articles, and they were fine. They are a little bit more advanced developers. I don't know what you guys are here, if you're developers, marketers, or where you're at in your WordPress, but nothing he couldn't solve just going by Mark's um, articles. And I guess I am avoiding saying his last name. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. So this is just Live Ninja's contact information. So if you wanna talk to them about how they got started, these will be really good mentors to really get you launched in a startup because it takes more time than a 30 minute presentation. You know, I'm just trying to give you the ideas of what you can do with WordPress. But if you talk to them, they're open on Wednesdays and they'll tell you all about their journey as a startup. Stuck. So that's just me and Pata, your favorite uh, WordCamp pirate, having fun at Waffle Wednesday. <laughs> so it's a fun place to be, just emphasizing. 
So a lot of people also ask if a startup should be an app. Most people think that it should be an app, and that's just not true. It can be a website. As long as you're working on an idea that's you know, helping a cause, it doesn't have to be an app. So, and if your company is not an app, an app can be useful in marketing and customer acquisition. So what happens sometimes is people think that, oh, I have an app, right? And it shows my company information. I'm set, I'm gonna be a millionaire. But what people don't understand is that people don't download apps on their phone to find out about your, your company information. You know, if you think about why you download apps, it's one, they serve a purpose for you, or there's something fun about it. And there's these um, app creators or for non-coders that you see all over the web, but they just pretty much take what's on your website and put it, and who's gonna download that, you know? And they try to sell you this, but that's not how it works, you know? People download apps because it's gonna be a service to themselves. So you can also impress the investors with a working app if you've ever been to a hackathon or any of these places where your app can be discovered, like Live Ninja, they told me they, went, they found an event, a hackathon type event or an investor pitch on Twitter, and then um, they just talked to them, they went to pitch, and boom, somebody invested in their company because they had a working application, they had a working something, compared to everyone else who just showed up with an idea. Some people show up and say, oh, we have an app, right? They put up um, um, a landing page, they get people to sign up, well, yeah, look, we have this software, nothing is built, but they're not gonna tell you that, right? So what is an investor gonna go after? Something that works. And this is why we suggest WordPress, to have something to show. And Live Ninja is one of those companies that shows you that it works and they're successful on WordPress. So some people don't even have landing pages. Some people just have social media networks and they're trying to sell you software, but they're such good salespeople. So, you know, again, those marketing skills are so important in that launch that they will sell you software that does not exist. <laughs> Okay, so who isn't on mobile these days? I don't know, that's like, I think that's a hard question. Everyone's on mobile. Maybe people overseas, okay. Anyway. So we have WordPress, right? And we wanna create something and make it into an app. App Presser, because who has heard of App Presser? People in the top. <laughs> so App Presser will take your WordPress website and turn it into an app. So like we talked about before, if your WordPress website has functionality that can be valuable to a user so that they can actually download the app, then please use AppPressor. But if you're, you're just pulling in your website information into an app, you're not gonna get as many downloads because it's not useful to the customer really. I mean, if I wanna see your events, I don't need to take up space on my phone. You, I'm, that's for my pictures and my kids and my family, right? Like why am I gonna download your app? So, but if your app does something that um, is amazing and I wanna actually download with WordPress functionality, then AppPressor is one of these um, function, um, software you can use to take your WordPress website into a app. So why is AppPressor different? Well, it can actually take WordPress functionality that is not available in these other app creators and put it into an app. So like I said, Live Ninja said that they can if take a WordPress website, use AppPressor, and turn it into an Uber type app, okay? That they wouldn't see it being difficult. But again, that's a little bit more experience and you have to kind of look into it more, but it's not difficult to do, so. And the contact at AppPressor is Brian Messlinger, no, I'm bad at these, Web Dev Studios. <laughs> I'm terrible at the names, tell, yeah, really bad, anyway. So, uh, did you guys know that Facebook was first a hybrid app, that they were not a native app in the beginning? So when you get this presentation, you can click on the Facebook app and you can learn more about how, you know, what they did and what went wrong. So, so hybrid apps are apps that are created using more than one software method. So it's not just created in the native um, mobile app platform, like an iOS or Android system, it's created with something like AppPressor. So I'm just giving you this information so that, you know, it's giving you an idea that you can use it. It's not like a bad idea or it's perfect for launching an M MVP, you know, a, a product that you can show investors, a product that you can show people, and something that works, which is what most people look at. All, all these hackathons, or all these investor pitches, something that works. 
So why are people still here? Shouldn't you be working on your startup ideas? <laughs> so uh, let's see. Maybe I have here 100 free responsive WordPress business themes. So you guys could just click on them. Um, if you already have like premium WordPress themes that you're using, you can use that. But I just share that link with you just in case you need something to get you started. Or if you know someone who needs to get started, there's 100 responsive WordPress business themes. And responsive, of course, is the way to go. So you don't have to worry about mobile development or anything. And you probably already knew that. <laughs> okay. Oh, is that my family? <laughs> am I using my family to get you guys to take pictures of me and Scooby-Doo? <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay. So anyway, um, that's just for fun. I'm not going to force you to take pictures with me. But if you want to, you can stop by later and you know take a photo with me. And we can tweet that. And um, So if you really need to consult with someone to lead you from start to the end of a development uh, of starting a startup, you can talk to David Bissett. That's his specialty. He can actually give you great consulting on startup work, um, startups with WordPress. And this is Jackie Jimenez. I don't know if you guys know her or not. She, um, so um, she is no longer with us. So every time I do a presentation at WordCamp, I just put her photo. So, and that is it. You guys have questions? <laughs> I think I did it really fast, but <laughs> I like the, but I, no. Any questions? Any suggestions for other people here? Um, she died. Yeah, yeah. That's how I got involved with the WordPress groups too, with Jackie. So, anyone else? Any questions, any suggestions for other people, people with startup experience? I'm going to give it to David. He's going to put it on um, the WordCamp website. And if not, I'll have it on a slide share as well. I will tweet it. Yes, OK. I'm a social media SaaS. So if you want to, I'm going to tweet it. You just look for social media SaaS. Anyone else? Does anyone here have startup ideas? Or don't tell me them. Don't tell anyone else. But <laughs> only the people you trust. But some questions you can stop by later and just kind of talk to me. No. Well, that is all for today. Then. <laughs> Thank you.